I knew from growing up that Christian was a bad word, right. that Jesus was the God of the Gentiles, not for us. That right. was definitely underlined. Hey, friends, thanks for joining us once again in our Conversations with Jewish Believers in Jesus playlist. Our guest today is Dr. Michael Sishi, practitioner of medicine and director of the Jews for Jesus branch in Johannesburg, South Africa. Now, we know it's odd for most people to hear that a Jewish person has put their faith in Jesus and understand him to be the prophesied Messiah. But when someone with a family history like the one that our guest has today, uh, when he puts his faith in Jesus, this raises even more questions. So today, Dr. Michael Sishi will be sharing with us how he, a Jewish man that came from a traditional Jewish home, put his faith in Jesus as Messiah and Savior. Good day, everybody. And yeah, thanks for the opportunity to share it today. It's really wonderful. So hey, Michael, it's great having you here. I've been looking forward to this conversation. Thank you, Jeff. Me too. You have a really <laughs> interesting past. Um, and as well as your Jewish parents. So, I mean, yes. there's World War II, there's anti-Semitism, there's the Holocaust, yes. Yes. you name it. And, and when we speak of a ho the horrible past of, of the so-called Christian church, one of the things that many of our Jewish brothers and sisters may not know is that hatred for Jews was mostly and an, an, an only an Anglo-European regional phenomenon. Like, there have been Christians all over the world since the spreading of the gospel. And in other countries and continents, Jew hatred was unheard of, and within the Christian wow. church especially. And so, in fact, you know, the opposite was the case. You know, there, there was a great love for the Jewish people. So, unfortunately, your parents were wrapped up in a culture that strayed from the Bible. Uh, they strayed from the Jewish roots of their faith. And in light of the fact that your parents were caught up in this horrible period of time, for Jewish people, how did you become a follower of Jesus? Excellent question. Uh, it looks like the God of the impossible, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, was certainly at work to make a path and actually make a way to the truth we find in Messiah, in Messiah Yeshua. So, yeah, let me just sketch some broad strokes. Uh, having a look at my heritage, looking at the grandparents, grandparents on my father's side hailed from uh, St. Petersburg in Russia, from, I think, Vilna in Lithuania. And uh, so on my dad's side, those two parents, well, grandparents, should I rather say, they end up in, of all places, Ireland. They meet there, they get married, they start a family, and then they sail to South Africa. They continue with the family. And my father, Jack Jacob, he's born in South Africa. He meets my mum here, and they start a family. On my mum's side, where did they hail from? They hailed from Poland. So what we need to see is that they were all escaping persecution at some point, the pogroms in Eastern Europe, and then the rise of the Nazis later on. So we're looking at uh, the 1800s, then early 1900s. My dad was 17 years uh, senior to my mum. He was born 1914, and uh, she was 17 years his junior. And so there was, if you like, two age gaps between my dad my mum, my mum's name, Janie, and myself, actually. So uh, that's that's the initial broad strokes of where we came from. Jewish family, uh, on my mum's side, she's mentioned, she didn't really know her dad nor her stepdad, it looks like it. They both died young, but there seemed to be a rabbinic connection. There was a rabbi somewhere there in that. It's very sketchy. I, I don't have too many details, but just stories from my childhood and so on. So mum and dad meet, we, they meet in Johannesburg in South Africa, a, a real Jewish center, a center for Jewish people to thrive and uh, grow. They meet, they start a family. As it says, they went forth and multiplied. There's four of us. I am three of, of four, a, a younger brother, two older sisters. And I grew up in a very Jewish area of Johannesburg at the time called Berea. Berea of all places, and we know there's a biblical Berea uh, somewhere there, I suppose, in Asia, if, if I'm correct, what used to be uh, the province of Asia, you can correct me, but just framing things. So uh, this is where I grow up, and uh, I'm in a lively Jewish home. We celebrate all the festivals and so on, but all of this is checkered with the story that's gone before that's framing everything, where my dad goes off to war, 
and uh, he, he's actually captured in 1942 with the fall of Tobruk, and he's with the, the Allies and the British Army. They have to surrender. They surrounded, shipped off to Italy. When the Allies invade Europe and start making progress, he's then shipped off to Germany, and he experiences the horrors of being a prisoner of war. Um, he, he's, I would say, his eyewitness in the forest to the bombing of Dresden, and so on. He survives all of that, liberated by the Americans. That's a pretty emotional side of the story. Yeah, and uh, yeah. he's demobilized, sent back to South Africa. And I don't think they ever get a chance to do post-traumatic counsel stress counseling, you know, like we have today, to process all these horrors post-war and all the traumas. But this frames him. And, um, yeah, he meets my mum. And he tells us all sorts of stories. He tells us lots of jokes. Uh, we're mostly happy, but underneath there's a sadness. There's a sadness with the stuff that's been and the horrors that have been. And let me tell you, in our home, there were two swear words. One was Jesus Christ. The other was German. And you know what was ironic? We often had German neighbors. And my dad would have German bosses. How ironic. Uh, you know, we have a God who actually wants us to reconcile and heal the hurts of the past. But how? with all these obstacles, anti-Semitism, persecution, um, the horrors of war, and so on. How is that actually possible? It seems totally impossible. But God makes a way. And so what does he do? He starts to sow seeds. And uh, we'll mention some of those seeds a little bit later. But I go through my bar mitzvah, coming of age ritual, and God sows a couple of seeds there. We'll talk about those, I think, a little bit later. But let's just say those seeds are like little breadcrumbs, precious little jewels, breadcrumbs that actually lead me in 1994. I'm age 24, and guess what? In 94, something significant happens in South Africa. We have our first democratic elections ever. Remember, Nelson Mandela was freed uh, a short while before that. We have our first elections, and uh, Every South African can vote. Every tribe, tongue, and nation can now be equal mm. and can get a voice. And that's our, that, that was a significant moment because also in 1994, at the season of Passover or Easter, it was on that Easter Sunday, Passover, Resurrection Sunday, First Fruit Sunday in, in, in the Jewish calendar. That's where I have an encounter with the risen Lord, with the Holy Spirit, with the God of Israel, has an appointment with me and introduces himself. And I don't know what's going on, but my heart is touched. My heart is warmed. My mind doesn't know what's happening. But where do I find myself? Of all places, Oigavolt, where you don't want to go as a Jew, forbidden, forbidden, a Christian service of all places. My goodness, how do I end up there? Well, let me tell you how God works. He works in the ordinary. A pretty girl invited me. <laughs> A pretty girl invited me. Me, dead scared. Off I go, you know, wanting to be all brave, impress the girl, and so on. Not a girl, a young lady. And... Um, so we end up at this, uh, what they call the sunrise service, watching the sun come up, and that's where God had an appointment with me. And I don't know, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob is alive and well, and he was waiting to say, hello, Michael, good morning, good day, I want to introduce myself. So I think that's a, a quick summary, a hop, skip, and a jump, just to paint some broad strokes. It is, um, and it's a it's a it's a touching story. Um, when you had this encounter, Michael, because of your roots, because of your your past, um, did you think it was odd? Were you were you hesitant? Was it, or or, or did just was the love of, of Jesus just filling you up so much that you didn't even question? I was dead scared. Hmm. I knew from growing up that Christian was a bad word. Right. That Jesus was the God of the Gentiles not for us. That right. was definitely underlined. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to make the point in the beginning where this so-called Christian Jew hatred, and I say so-called because it was a, it was a, a, an aberration of, of, of the scriptures, of the New Testament, but is, it was, a, it was a, a local phenomenon in certain parts of, of Europe. And so um, that's why I wanted to bring that up, but uh, I, I had a very similar experience. Uh, and when you said that, that 
you know, I was being filled up and it was a very strange experience and I didn't quite know what to do with it, but you couldn't, you couldn't resist this, this feeling. And that's, that's what happened to me as well. So thank you for sharing, sharing that story. So stay tuned for the next episode with Dr. Michael Sishi, where he'll be discussing his search for healing and what happened when his career came face to face with tragedy.